Hey, this is Zach. On this episode of Now You Know, we took our cameras along for a tour of Fenway Park, and I interviewed my dad, Ernie, who is going to be going to his 50th opening day next spring, about his memories of the Boston Red Sox. I remember walking in the Fenway Park the very first time and I walked up over on the first base side up one of those ramps and it was so green I mean the memory is just burned in me I never saw so much green and the, and at the time I was required to cut the lawn at our house so when I saw the grass at Fenway Park I, it was astounding it was so green and it's wonderful because its shape is determined by the surroundings it, it, no architect said okay this is the perfect park where can we put it they had to fit it in there, and that's why they had to build that wall, because it was, but if you look at it from the air, I mean, you can see, I mean, there's the turnpike, and yeah, there's, you get, boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. <laughs> you get Route 90, like, 100 feet from it. So, yeah. I mean, it's a wonderful play. Like, I went to uh, L.A. Dodger Stadium, and, I mean, it was so bizarre. It's surrounded by the world's largest parking lot. Yeah. It's it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, Your first game was what year? Do you remember? Fifty-four or five. We used to almost always go on Sundays, and the game it was always a doubleheader on Sundays, just about every Sunday. The first memory I have of buying a ticket at Fenway Park was to uh, sit in the bleachers. I might have been fourteen, and it was seventy-five cents. So, and was that affordable at the time, or was that a big deal? Oh yeah, that was you know, a, a bunch of uh, soda bottle returns. The Red Sox, by August, would be 25 games out of first. And we just loved the game. It didn't matter. I mean, we never looked at the uh, standings. But uh, now, there were some big players playing when you first... Ted Williams. So wasn't he a big draw for people? He was probably the big draw uh, because he was reliably a great hitter. But by the 50s, the Red Sox were doing so poorly that it didn't matter much. In the 40s, he had hit 406 and um, all those home runs. And they had built the right field bullpen for him. And when he first came to Fenway Park, he hit a million fly balls just in front of the deep fence in right field. So they built the bullpen there, so those fly balls became home runs. We saw the seat today, the, the Ted Williams seat, the red seat, where he supposedly is the farthest home run hit. Yeah, I... And the story goes that, you know, every year Ortiz walks out and goes, did they move that further back? <laughs> <laughs> he was a remarkable hitter. I mean, he was fun to watch. And he was... Uh, he didn't get along with the newspaper people. He had a chip on his shoulder, and so he would often do and say things that were a little uh, attention-getting. and. He was always in trouble. I, I happened to be at a game one night. He spit at a fan and it was fined $25,000, which was a quarter of his salary. Wow. And why? Just because. The fan must have said something. He was <laughs> pretty thin skinned, I guess. I don't know. But, I mean, we all thought it was great. I mean, we didn't. You know what I mean? We <laughs> we're good for him, you know, and that kind of thing. I've only probably driven or taken the subway to, you know, four or five games out of all the games I've gone to, I just always have walked. In fact, in 1968, a friend of mine said to me the night before opening day, he said, let's go to opening day tomorrow. And I said, yeah, okay. And I took a day off from work and we walked over and bought the tickets. And the lady at the box office said to us, where would you like to sit? Now, we didn't have a lot of choices, but I don't know if it was a sellout, but it didn't seem like it was. And then they had done well in 67. They had been in the World Series. Wow. So, so a year after the World Series, right. you could get an opening day seat. We walked over that day. Now and you've gone every opening day since. Every, every, well, I missed one. You never, you never <laughs> I'm never going to live that down. I, uh, my friend Flip has gone to every single one. This will be our 50th coming up, and uh, I, I've been to 49. I was, I talked to them on the telephone, <laughs> the one I missed. But. Count, I guess. <laughs> when, when you first started going, how many games were there in a season? 154. It used to be the season ended on October 2nd or whatever, and then there were seven games, the World Series, and that was ended. You know, so by October 10th, or 12th. What do, you, what do you mean the season was over and then it was the World Series? Well, Wait, so it was the best team from the American League? Right. Oh. There were eight American League teams and eight National League teams. The first place of each one played each other in the World Series, and that was wow. it. Do yeah. baseball players seem like the superstars that they seem like today? Like oh, no. I remember 
I mean, all our heroes like Mickey Mantle, you'd get to know a lot about them and you'd find out what their uh, winter job was. They didn't make enough money to live, you know, uh, uh, I mean, they could live, but I mean, it wasn't a fancy lifestyle. Ted Williams was the first player to make $100,000 wow. and that was in 1960. And that was, you know, like a lot of money and that's because he, he, in those days, you belonged to the team. You could not leave. If you didn't want to play for the Red Sox, then you couldn't play baseball. They owned you. A guy like Ted Williams, he was just sort of stuck with the Red Sox, you know, and even though he was the best hitter in baseball, he, he could have gone to any team, and you know, I mean, it was a whole different world then. And you could trade, and it did occasionally happen, like Babe Ruth was traded to the Yankees. But um, in general, almost every player in your team was brought up through the minors. Your minor league stuff was very important. Now, how about the Green Monster? You were going to games and the Green Monster was already there? Green Monster was there. It had a score. You know how the Red Sox have a scoreboard with every inning? Right. There was a scoreboard with every American League team, every American League game. Oh, it was being There'd be four games because there were eight teams, and you would see the entire eight by inning on, oh, you okay. know, all nine innings. So the Yankees were the owners. Oh, yeah. Until, well, until the 90s. And unfortunately, Mr. Yaki was quite a racist and passed up a number of great players that, you know, would have played for the Red Sox. I mean, they came through our farm system or were available to us. And he just, I think the Red Sox probably are likely were the last team in baseball to get a black player. The Red Sox uh, tried out Jackie Robinson and passed, passed on him. Now this was back when, you know, we were always one or two players short of mm -hmm. winning a, a pennant. Talk about the Buckner game oh. that uh, any Boston, you know, outside of Boston, you know, or Massachusetts, no one knows what you're talking about. But so what, I was just a kid, so I, right. what, what happened? It was game six. The Red Sox were up what three. Years, what year is this? 86. 86, yeah. And Red Sox were up three games to two. They're um, winning the game, and it's the ninth inning. It looked like a shoe-in, and, you know, it got tense. And then whoever was pitching, he gets the hitter to hit a little ground ball, just a little bouncing ball up to first base. And, it, you know, you just, oh, this is it. This is the third out. This is it. And the ball just goes right through Bill Buckner's legs and into right field. And, it, you know, it was it would have been a double because there was nobody there to back it up. And and the runner scored and and the Red Sox lost. And they hadn't lost the series, but they lost game six, tied up. At, at that moment, you just, everyone just knew immediately the Red Sox had lost the World Series. It was not, they were not gonna come back. It was just a heartbreak. And, and some years before that, they had had a one game playoff with the Yankees that they lost because um, uh, Bucky Dent hit that home run. He never he hit two home runs like in his life, mm -hmm. and he hit this a little fly ball. It was a fly ball to left field that, because of that stupid left field wall, <laughs> was a home run. You know, it was like a pop up, mm -hmm. and they won that game. I tried to go to that game. I I took a day off from work and I tried to scalp a ticket, and I and it was before you know with I don't know if I had an ATM available or how somehow I just. I gathered up 75 bucks. I went to Kenmore Square, and this guy says, you know, tickets, anybody want tickets? Anybody want tickets? So I walk up to him, and I say, yeah, I'd like a ticket. And, he, he, and I said, you know, how much? And he, he said, $400 for a bleacher seat. <laughs> I tried a couple of the guys, and that was, I mean, that was cheap. I should have taken it, you know, but I didn't. Fast forward to 2003. Hmm. And that was just a game changer for the whole, just New England in general. Like it changed the Red Sox in 2003 were the best team in baseball. I mean, they just, you know, statistically, just watching them, they were just fabulous. Pedro Martinez, they were just, they definitely were going to get to the World Series. There was no question about it. And they just had to get through the Yankees. And, and again, they had them beat and um, greedy little, <laughs> I don't even like to say the name. He left Pedro in the game too long. I mean. Everybody knew it. Pedro was taken out of the game. We had the two best relief pitchers in baseball, either one of which would have closed out the game. It was no question. It was no problem. They knew we had a beat. Everybody knew. And then he puts Pedro back in, and then they get a hit, and they get another hit, and he leaves them in, and, and, and it just like collapsed around us. Nobody could even believe it. And it was so horrible. Then the next morning, 
I'm driving to work, I'm going down the Mass Pike, and on one of the overpasses, someone had uh, written on a sheet and hung it from the overpass. It said, kill Grady Little. And I thought, if I knew <laughs> where I should go, it should at the bottom, it should have said, let's all meet at such and such. I would have driven right there. It was, I mean, he must have gone into hiding because it was so egregious. It was unbelievable. We didn't make the World Series. I, I, it was awful. <laughs> now the following year, they were the best team in baseball. I mean, again, every, they just had a fabulous team. Great pitching, Pedro Martinez, the whole nine yards. And of course, they ended up, thanks to Kevin Millar, I'll always, I think, I mean, he was the most important thing. I mean, they had a great team, and that was important. But without Kevin Millar, I think they would have, when they lost the th first three games to the Yankees, they would have never bounced back. But And it wasn't that he was the greatest player. Oh, no, no. He just got them going. He was something, He was a presence in the clubhouse and the fans. I mean, after we were down three games to zip, they interviewed him in the clubhouse, and everyone was looking down, and, I mean, it was a... It looked like a funeral, and and Kevin Millar said to the reporter, "We got him right where we want him." <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he's really like up, you know. And, yeah. and he explained it, and you know, okay, tomorrow, like, they're gonna let down, you know. We're gonna, and we got nothing to lose. We're gonna win tomorrow, so we win, and then you know, we win the next game, and now they're thinking, "Oh my God, we've got to win because they, this is ridiculous." And then we will win the third game, and then. Anybody can win a one-game series, you know. It was like it made total sense, and that's exactly what happened. Although we needed Dave Roberts, and it was the most one. 2004 was for a Boston fan, and it was the most wonderful year imaginable. And then we went on after beating the Yankees four straight. We beat St. Louis four straight. It was just. Talk about the Dave Roberts play though, because I think oh, that was. Bad. I still watch it once in a while on YouTube. Here's a situation where everyone in the park. Everyone on earth who was watching baseball that day knew his job was to steal second base. He, that was him. somebody said to him, Dave, steal second base. So he goes out there and he's, he takes the lead and he, he runs. And the, the throw from the catcher was right on the money. I mean, it was a perfect throw and he just beat it. When, when you actually saw it live, it was like you really had to wait for the umpire. Usually, you know, you think, well, he's safe or he's out. but. You had to wait for the umpire, and he, he called him safe. And the replay later, you know, showed how close the play was. But he was safe, and it was that was. I mean, and then of course, uh, Bill Miller, the third baseman, I think, got a hit that scored him, and that base that tied the game. And then Ortiz won it like the next night. I mean, the next day. I mean, these games went on forever. I don't think I slept, you know, four hours in that whole week. It was unbelievable. What's it, so favorite players? I mean, Ted Williams. Must be up there, but any oh, Jackie Jensen was my number one favorite player. He played right field. He led the he led the league in RBIs a bunch of years and home runs like one or two years. And he just was my favorite. And I, my sister got me an autographed ball of. He, she dated a guy who worked in the front office of Fenway Park for a while, and and he got me an autographed ball. And he was my favorite. And then Ted Williams, just because he was like a legend. I mean, you couldn't. You either hated him or you liked him, but I mean, he was, you couldn't not know about him. So 2004 make up for all the... Oh yeah, years. that was fine. I was perfectly happy. 2007, I actually went to the World Series. So I've got to go to World Series. I saw them win a World Series. You know, everything else is just great. When the Braves were here, I remember Warren Spahn and Eddie Matthews, and they were all big stars of the day. And then they moved out of town. It was like, oh my God, now what am I going to do? I'm going to have to go see those crappy Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> they were quite crappy. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, awesome. well, I'm glad you got to see Family Park and it's yeah. a quiet moment. Yeah, it is fun. Um, thank you for watching this episode of Now You Know. Please subscribe. We have tons more videos that we're sharing. Um, also, if you haven't checked out our uh, cross country road trip in the Model X, definitely check that out. Yeah, and we're open to new ideas, so please let us know and please um, support us on Patreon. Now You Know. Now You Know.